Ubuntu. It's one of the most widely used Linux distributions in the world, powering millions of desktops and laptops. Over the years, it's had its fair share of controversy, but it continues to stand out as one of the most influential and beginner-friendly distros available today. And each release brings a refreshed GNOME desktop experience with its own personality. Polished with thoughtful design choices, quality of life improvements, and a focus on accessibility for new users. Today, Ubuntu remains a dependable platform for beginners, experienced users, DevOps professionals, and software developers alike. Now, Ubuntu 25.10 has arrived. Codenamed the Questing Quaka, this release ships with GNOME 49, Linux kernel 6.17, and a variety of under-the-hood enhancements and interface refinements. In this review, we're going to explore what's new, we'll take a closer look at the overall experience, and I'll share my thoughts on whether or not it's worth installing. So, let's dive in and check out Ubuntu 25.10. Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. It's October, which means it's time for a brand new Ubuntu release. In this video, we're going to check out Ubuntu 25.10. And in this review, I'm going to go over all the details about this new release. I'll talk about the installation process, performance, and I'll also go over what's new this time around. As usual, Ubuntu 2510 ships with the latest GNOME release, complemented by a set of Ubuntu-specific refinements and quality of life improvements that give the desktop its familiar feel. This release delivers strong performance and a polished user experience, making it well-suited for both new and experienced Linux users. The software stack has been fully updated as well, ensuring access to current development tools, libraries, and desktop applications. Ubuntu's extensive hardware support remains one of its key strengths, making it an excellent choice for users running modern hardware. And I can't wait to get started and show off the new release, but before I do, I just wanted to mention that the footage in this video is going to be from real hardware. In fact, on this channel, I always use real hardware for my distribution reviews, so if that's something that you think is awesome, then definitely subscribe to Learn Linux TV. And also, while you're here, consider becoming a channel member. That'll give you access to not only ad-free content, but also early access to select videos. So hit that join button, and I would really appreciate that. Anyway, with all of that out of the way, it's time to check out Ubuntu 2510, so let's do that right now. And here it is in all its glory. Ubuntu 2510 continues its steady refinement of the Linux desktop with a series of thoughtful improvements that many users will appreciate. From installation to day-to-day -day use, the overall experience feels polished and there's noticeable attention to detail throughout. Like previous releases, Ubuntu 2510 ships with the latest GNOME desktop, but Ubuntu's presentation and customization of GNOME set it apart from other distributions. So much so that it could feel like a distinct desktop environment. Ubuntu layers several tweaks and enhancements on top of upstream GNOME, including its own theme, a built-in dock for quick application access, and various usability improvements. And these customizations give the desktop a unique character, and that can be seen as either a pro or a con, depending on your expectations. Overall, the combination of GNOME and Ubuntu's modifications creates a consistent, distinct experience with each release, and 2510 is no exception. When it comes to new features, Ubuntu 2510 delivers updates from two directions. There's new functionality introduced upstream in GNOME 49, and also additional enhancements from Canonical's development team. GNOME 49 itself brings several noteworthy improvements, including new controls on the lock screen and improved HDR support, among other things. There's also updated applications as well. However, Ubuntu selectively integrates these changes, which means some GNOME features are included as is, while others are modified or replaced altogether. For example, GNOME 49 ships with an updated GNOME software application, but Ubuntu replaces this entirely with its own Ubuntu App Center. On the other hand, the new default GNOME image viewer, Lupe, is included in Ubuntu 2510, but other default applications are swapped out. The terminal emulator is another example of this. Rather than adopting GNOME's default console, Ubuntu uses an alternative of its own choosing. And this selective integration has been Ubuntu style for quite a while now. Ubuntu's GNOME desktop is basically a curated blend of upstream components and Ubuntu specific choices, resulting in a user experience that differs notably from other GNOME based distributions. For some, this adds value by making the system easier to use out of the box, while others might feel that all of these choices make GNOME something else entirely, which can be confusing. 
and the result is a bit of an identity mismatch, though most users likely won't be bothered by it. Looking beyond GNOME itself, Ubuntu 25.10 introduces a few notable system-level improvements, though this release focuses more on refinement than sweeping changes. And one major highlight is improved NVIDIA driver handling. In particular, Canonical has implemented fixes that help prevent freezes and graphical corruption when resuming from suspend, and that's an issue that's plagued many users for years, including me. So it's great that some attention has finally been given to this issue. I'll need to spend more time with the release to verify how reliable these fixes are in practice, but it is promising progress. I hope these improvements will make their way upstream so that way other distributions can benefit from these fixes as well, since NVIDIA issues are hardly unique to Ubuntu. Another improvement involves how update notifications are handled. Previously, when updates were made available, a pop-up would interrupt whatever you were doing, and that was very annoying. In Ubuntu 25.10, this has been replaced with a less intrusive tray icon, which is a much cleaner and more user-friendly approach. Sorry to interrupt my own video, but I wanted to let you guys know about something really cool that I created recently. I put together the Ultimate Linux Commands Cheat Sheet, a downloadable PDF that covers all the essential Linux commands, as well as some great bash aliases, hardening tips, and other nuggets that I've picked up over the years. For just a $3 donation, it's yours, and it makes a great reference for those of you that work with a terminal. And while you're there, check out my other products at the shop as well. There's all kinds of Linux-themed products there. For example, t-shirts like the Dark Side of the Terminal, there's a classic Debian Swirl tee, and even a shirt to warn those around you that you're obsessed with Linux. Every purchase helps keep this channel going, there's a lot of cost involved with editing all the content for you guys, and it also helps justify the amount of caffeine that I go through while I edit these videos. As always, thank you guys so much for supporting Linux Learning. I really appreciate it. Now, let's get back to the video. Perhaps a bigger architectural shift in this release is the removal of the X11 desktop session. And that means Ubuntu 25.10 now runs Wayland only, marking a full transition away from the legacy X11 display server. And this change has been a long time coming. Wayland has matured significantly, and for most users, it's stable and performant. While some users may be concerned about compatibility, Wayland has been reliable for quite a while, and for most workloads, the transition should be seamless. There's also several smaller, under-the-hood improvements in Ubuntu 25.10 as well. For example, Ubuntu now includes sudo rs, a Rust-based re-implementation of sudo that's designed as a drop-in replacement, so most users won't even notice the change. In addition, the installer now supports TPM-backed full-disk encryption, offering stronger security integration with hardware TPM modules. Now, this feature is still considered experimental, so it may not be widely adopted yet, but it is a meaningful step forward. When it comes to installing Ubuntu 25.10, the installer experience is largely unchanged from the previous release, though there are a few refinements. One notable improvement is the new encryption option that I just mentioned, which gives users another option to secure their systems during setup. Aside from that, the installation flow is largely unchanged. After booting into the live environment, you could try Ubuntu without committing to an install, and when you're ready, you can launch the installer and then answer a series of short, straightforward questions to complete the setup. An interesting detail is that ZFS options remain within the installer, but it's still considered experimental. Ubuntu first introduced ZFS support in 2019 with version 1910, so the fact that this is still considered experimental six years later is mind-boggling. It's unclear when or if Canonical plans on promoting this to stable, but as long as it carries that label, I really don't think most users are likely to adopt it outside of testing or advanced setups. Minor complaints aside, Ubuntu's installer remains one of the most user-friendly within the Linux ecosystem. It's stable, easy to navigate, and the installation itself is typically fast and smooth. Ultimately, it may not offer anything groundbreaking this time around, but it is reliable and it gets the job done effectively. My overall opinion of Ubuntu 25.10 is that it is a solid release and the desktop experience is very well designed. Performance is pretty good as well, although Ubuntu has had really good performance for quite a while now. I think the best way to describe Ubuntu 25.10 is that it's more of the same. So that means it's not going to change your overall opinion about Ubuntu, whether you're a fan or not. If you do enjoy using Ubuntu, I have no problem recommending it highly. It'll be more of what you already love, with an updated software stack and additional refinements that won't necessarily change the way that you use your computer, but it does offer legitimate improvements, even if nothing really stands out. If you're on the fence, I think it really comes down to whether or not you want a pure GNOME experience. The desktop experience in 2510 is basically a hodgepodge of features that come along with GNOME 49, 
along with Ubuntu's usual modifications that adds its own personality. If you want a pure GNOME experience, Fedora is still the winner here as they provide the best GNOME experience you could possibly get. And the situation doesn't change even with this new Ubuntu release, but if you prefer the quality of life improvements that Ubuntu provides, you're going to enjoy this latest release and it's worth upgrading to. As an added bonus, the next Ubuntu release will be supported long term, so even if you prefer LTS releases, 2510 is still worth upgrading to, since you can directly upgrade to 2604 as soon as that comes out next year. And there's our video. This time around we took a look at Ubuntu 2510. It's a really good release, although there's really not all that much to get excited about. It's a really solid incremental release of Ubuntu, and if you're an Ubuntu fan, I think you're going to love it. Anyway, if you enjoyed this review, then be sure to click that like button to let YouTube know, and also subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux, and I'll see you in the next video.